Really? really? Yeah. Oh wow! Oh my gosh! What, what did they? What did they say? Did they say they were blown away by it? They said they use it like twenty-five times a day. Um, it's wow. Nicole Leffer. Do you, uh, I don't know if you know, know her. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, and she's marketing, so she uses it for like describe this product or uh, like she did an analysis, like she pulled off some LinkedIn things that she'd done screenshots. Basically, she screenshots everything. She puts her, her PowerPoint slide up and says, what should I do to make this better? I mean, her prompts are better than that, obviously. But <laughs> Oh, I see. Oh, oh, that's really cool. So she has it analyze some yep. image and then generate something based on that. Yeah. So just like a screenshot, paste, prompt, go. Oh, that's really yeah. cool. I like. I'm, I'm giving the, up right now. I'm. I'm. I'm giving up. I'm handing my cameras over. Okay, I'm all done. Yeah, same here. <laughs> One of the things that she did say was that um, it works better if you tell it, if you ask it to generate a prompt for Dolly, because it's right. Dolly is like yeah. sibling, mm -hmm. uh, and when they uh, and when a prompt is generated for Dolly, it usually works pretty well in Mid Journey wow. too. But if you say generate a prompt for Mid Journey, you don't get as good a prompt. Yeah, I know. Oh it's, wow, it's, not it's probably on purpose too, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. All right, great. Well, it looks like we got a bunch of people here. What was that? Uh, tool, the tool that's being talked about is Dolly 3, um, and we'll talk about that tonight. It was Dolly 3, right, Beth? The, she said uh, ChatGPT. Sorry. It was the ChatGPT vision. Oh, the vision. Oh, the seeing of it. Got it. Okay. So we'll talk about both of those tonight. Uh, Dolly 54, exactly. Um, all right, let's let's get this started. We, we are recording, and I see that Lee Lee Chazen is is also recording. There's a there's a transcription bot in here, so so Lee's going for the power notes early. I like it. It's a solid move. Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to the AI Salon. Uh, Leah and I are your hosts. Leah, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing really good. I uh, am still not quite keeping up with AI, but uh, doing my best to. Wait, you're not keeping up. That's unacceptable. But I'm doing really good. I'm happy to have one of my uh, designs up behind me tonight and get, I'm really excited about the, um, we're going to announce tonight and where we're at. So I'm good. How are you, Kyle? I'm good. I'm, I'm similarly excited. I feel like our, our little salons growing up are, or at a minimum, we're experimenting, right? It's, and it's crazy. I'm excited yeah. About that. I am. Um, when I posted the salon meeting today on LinkedIn, I was reflecting on how we have like six more meetings this year. That's it. And 2023 will be done. And how much different things are than when we started talking about this at the end of 2022. And I feel like our salon has only been, um, Ali just asked, when's our one year anniversary? It's not even a year yet. And I feel like we've just traveled leaps and bounds together on the journey. It's nuts. It's crazy. Yeah, it's you know it's funny. It, it, it almost feels like, and I, and I think the the new multimodal ChatGPT is going to screw all this up. But it almost feels like the the sort of generative AI business kind of settled into okay, we've got this all figured out. Like it's it's sort of in a groove, and now everything's about to blow up again. <laughs> so, so. It's like, and if there's anything I've learned this year is that there is no groove. There is no settling into a groove. There is no, this is how it's going to be. Something is going to happen. Something's going to launch and it's going to disrupt everything. And it's happening at a pace. This is a familiar model. We've lived through this, but it just, we've lived through it over 15 years. And now it's happening over 15 months. <laughs> like, yeah. And, and, and some, of the, some of the stuff is happening over, you know, 15 minutes, right? Right. <laughs> you just realize, oh my God, that changed. That's going to be right. different. So, so yeah, it's crazy. Well, so so um, what what Lee and I are sort of kicking the tires on here is is what the salon's really about, right? Just a community of people choosing to be on this adventure, choosing to say, well, <laughs> this stuff's coming whether we want it or not. Um, <laughs> there must be someone out there who knows more than I do, and the fact is that there isn't. I mean, they might know. <laughs> Some more than you do, but nobody knows everything, right? Nobody knows what's going on right now. Um, There's no expert. And, and the whole idea with the salon was just to have a, 
a, a safe space, you know, kind of like a support group where you could come and say, hey, I'm, I'm curious about this AI stuff and, uh, and, and get together and share and things like that. And one of, one of the things that is an important part of the salon are our values. And so, Leah, you want to walk through those? I'll share my screen. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And I love coming back to these values because I do think for me, everything happening with AI is very exciting, but it also feels very destabilizing. And I think it can feel almost a little bit alone too. And so I keep coming back to what is a community that we can build together so we're in this together. Um, and so we're AI adventurers and the values that we have, the first one is curiosity. We started this because we're curious. We started this because we wanted to know more. Um, we're eager to learn new things. Ask questions, experiment, experiment, experiment. We're all here to do that together. Generosity. We share our knowledge, the resources, and the feedback we have with others and support each other's growth and development. There's so much to learn. We can't possibly keep up. Even if it's obvious to you, it may not be obvious to the person next to you. Exploration. We're excited to try new things, take risks, embrace uncertainty and ambiguity. Act as if no one knows what they're doing because nobody knows what they're doing. Collaboration. We look for opportunities to work with others, to exchange ideas, and to create something greater than ourselves. Find a partner or a posse, start a project, start 10. We won't judge you, and who knows, you might just make a friend or the next $1 billion venture. Inclusion, we actively seek out and value diverse perspectives and experiences, recognizing that our differences make us stronger. We create an environment where everyone feels seen, heard, and respected, and where everyone has an equal opportunity to contribute and succeed. Finally, empathy. We are mindful of the impact of our work on others, and we strive to create work that is respectful, inclusive, and meaningful. AI is one of the most transformative technological advances in humanity. Humans matter, take each other in, and act from a place of compassion. That's us. Exactly. Now, we, we were thinking about replacing that, that last one with be a jerk, but it's still, the, the committee is still, still meeting. We haven't really made the, made the call on that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, be a mean person here at the salon. Be a mean person. Judge, judge, judge strong. Judge, <laughs> judge everything. Judge everyone. <laughs> uh, exactly. Yeah. So, so with that, because empathy is still one of our values, um, so one of the things we like to do here is is go around and introduce ourselves. We have a lot of people here tonight, so let's try to do this really tight. Um, Ken, Ken will be our timekeeper. Let, let's start with the online folks. Leah, I know you're going to do a kind of an arts and crafts thing with a particular tool. Do you, you want people when they introduce themselves? Do you have a you have a you have a you have a shtick? You got a something they're going to do, right? Yeah. So when you introduce yourself, give us a little little bit about you, and then I'd like you to write a quick phrase about um, if ChatGPT or ChatGPT five was a character what would that character be and what would they look like are they a pet an animal a tree a robot just and jot down what that character is when you introduce yourself into the um message into the chat, oh, no, and we, into the chat but also say it right yeah say you can say it and then put it into the chat um and then we'll i'll give you direction after that okay cool so if you're online raise your hand it's the on the in the bottom center icons it's the third one from the right raise your hands Ken will call on you. He's also he's a master timekeeper. <laughs> if you go along, he'll just he'll just shut you down. <laughs> so so keep it tight so we can get through it. We'd love to just hear a little bit about you, what you're into, and then yeah, what what is it? Your the, the animal or object or whatever it is, ChatGPT is. Leah? Yes. Um yes. Sorry, I was looking at the tool we're gonna use. The um okay. Yes. Yeah, so just ch if chat GTB was a character, right? If chat GTB okay, oh, was okay. a physical something, um, do a quick um, phrase about what it would be. So I'm going to say chat GBT is a sentient plant, right? I'll write okay, that in, in the chat room. Great. And, and especially if you haven't introduced yourself before, if you're new here, please raise your hand and let us know who you are. Let us see. All right. Let's rock and roll. All right. You want to start in Denver or online? Yeah, let's start online. Okay, looks like we will begin with Claire Jacobs. You're first. You're uh, Claire, you're, you're muted. Claire? Oh, Claire, you're muted. We can't hear you. <laughs> well, what I was saying was, thank you for letting me know. <laughs> I get to go first twice in a row, so that 
tonight is my lucky night. Gonna go buy a lottery <laughs> ticket. Um, I'm a psychologist in Texas and I started listening. I had heard about AI, started listening to Kyle and he's an evangelizer. I mean, not to, you know, put too fine a point on it, but um, starting a cult, I think. <laughs> um, and so I, I hope, I think that I'm learning things just through, through that and through the play, the experimentation that you guys were talking about earlier. And when I think of chat GPT, I think of, I thought of Inspector Gadget for some reason. Yeah, that's good. I like it. I'm happy to be here. Thanks, y'all. Okay. Thanks, Claire. Appreciate it. Next up is Charles Brewer. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, Charlie Brewer in San Francisco. I'm a product manager and user experience design uh, consultant. And uh, I recently uh, wrote uh, from an outline that I created. Uh, uh, I used uh, Notion to sort of fill it out, Notion AI. And uh, after some prompting and tweaking, um, I was really surprised with uh, the results. It, it really sped things up. Uh, Claude and ChatGPT came in very distant seconds. I'm liking really? what Notion does with words. Wow. That's very At cool. least in my opinion. Cool. And Thanks. ChatGPT were a character, Charles? 80% uh, C3PO, 10% uh, Terminator, 10% uh, 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 robotic vacuum. <laughs> robotic vacuum. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> cool. Thanks, Charlie. Appreciate it. Next up, we have Jeff Gray. Hello, I'm Jeff Gray from Minneapolis. Um, I have been in the apparel business for 30 plus years and I'm loving learning about AI and I'm working on a platform that will use AI and, and be able to print on physical products and print on demand. And so I've been working on that for the last six months and I've been at this group with this group since January. So I've been here for a while and uh, I appreciate all the help and uh, uh, all the input from from these meetings, I've learned quite a bit. Um, if I had to choose a character, um, I'm going to go with Fair Fawcett. <laughs> <laughs> all right, perfect. To appreciate it, Peter Kaminsky, you're up next. Uh, hi, I'm Peter Kaminsky. I'm a technologist and entrepreneur, and uh, I do a lot of uh, work building tools and processes for uh, online community. Um, uh, if ChatGPT were a character, uh, it would be a fluffy bunny who loves to hop around, uh, but who also likes to sit in your lap and cuddle. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Thanks, Peter. Appreciate it. Bruce Wilhelm, you're up next. Thanks, Kyle. Um, I'm Bruce Wilhelm, Denver native. I've known Kyle since almost the beginning of Storybind. I see him as essentially a mentor of mine, and this is great to be here. I've been in, involved in technology, not in a great sense so that that's my career, but just in an interest and in some ways of using technology for my care, which really right now is marketing. If ChatGBT were a character, it would be a conscious, sentient owl. Perfect. Good to have you here, I Bruce. I like that. Eric Roland, you're up next. Hi. Uh, I'll start with the animal first. I would say a capuchin monkey. So it's it can be helpful or a little mischievous and lead you down the wrong path sometimes. Uh, yeah. So uh, I guess I'm uh, probably, I guess, data scientist, AI, ML engineer. Um, I'm I'm working with a bank and an ad agency right now, and uh, chat or uh, prompting failure on my part, I think. This weekend, I had this great plan that I was going to uh, use GPT to help me do a mapping between two different uh, documents, and I spent two and a half hours trying to get chat GPT to do it, or code interpreter, whatever they call it now, and like failed repeatedly, like went down the wrong path. Claude 2 was pretty good. But in the end, it took me a lot longer than I had initially hoped. So that was sort of a failure. 
And then a uh, personal milestone with the bank I'm contracting with, uh, I finally got to do what I've been wanting to do, and that's to stand up uh, LLMs like Falcon and Llama for internal use of the bank. And uh, the next step is to, uh, to start fine tuning them. So excited about that. All right, cool. thanks, Eric. I want to uh, just let's... jump in real quick and interrupt and tell everyone to make sure they're writing down like what you suggest, write it down in the uh, text chat over on the side um, so that you can sort of take notes of what you just said, because we're going to use that in a little bit. And I see some people have put it in, but some people haven't. Okay, sorry, Ken, go okay. back. <laughs> no, no problem, <laughs> appreciate that reminder. Uh, looks like Brian S, you're up next. Hey, everyone. Um, hopefully you can hear me fine. Uh, I am a product owner based out of Ohio right now, but I'm actually looking to move to the Denver area in, in the next few months. So um, yeah, I definitely want to try to get involved in the tech community that's based there. Uh, my uh, uh, sentient being or whatever for Chad would be Goddard from Jim Neutron. I think that would be a good <laughs> idea of what he would look like. Thank you. Yep, good to have you here, Brian. Appreciate it. Beth Lyons, you're up next. Hey, thanks. Glad to be here. Um, I uh, just started a fellowship, a part-time fellowship with the AI Exchange, um, and, uh, and I'm a co-host on a daily live stream um, called the Daily AI Show that live streams to uh, YouTube and LinkedIn. Um, Kyle was my gateway drug to AI. And, <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, I come here as often as I can, which is not very often. Super excited to be here tonight. Uh, and ChatGBT is a butler named Jeeves, 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 Jeeves. <laughs> <laughs> a slightly drunk butler named Jeeves. <laughs> okay, perfect. Good to have you here, Beth. Uh, Lee Chazen, you're up. You're muted, Lee. You're talking. Oh yeah. Uh, hi everyone, Lee Chazen over here in Sacramento. And if I had to be any type of an animal uh, related to ChatGPT would be a chameleon because uh, it, it matches its environment. Uh, that, uh, you know, it's, it's whatever you're thinking about, whatever you're working on, it becomes that thing. It becomes, you know, because you can't you can't name it yourself, but you can uh, give it this animal name. So what I do is um, I'm running a consulting outfit called GliderCell.com, and I am doing uh, generative AI consulting. Um, I've developed a number of prompts uh, for clients, and am now uh, potentially you know getting into some partnerships. So. Uh, I'm very interested to see where, where this goes. I had an interesting meeting with the CEO today. Um, and uh, there are people out there who need consultants in this area because they are just, they feel like they've been blindsided. And uh, and people in our group, you know, whether we have, uh, what, what do you call this, um, imposter syndrome or not, we ought to step forward and help guide them on this path. And I'll leave it there. Awesome. All right, good to have you back, Lee. Vicky Baptiste, you're up next. Hi, I'm Vicky. I am from Illinois, and in my day job, I am a language engineer and a content strategist. I also have a web design agency and a 3D printing business. Um, let's see. I think that ChatGPT is um, the, the like. If I could picture it, it would be like the consummate toddler. It's in its infancy. It talks a lot and doesn't know what the hell it's talking about. <laughs> All right, good to have you here, Vicky. I was introduced that. to Kyle through um, Mackenzie Bowes. I should. Oh, I nice. Well, so, nice. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, Vicky. Uh, Bob D, you're up next. Hi, guys. Uh, Bob Donigan, uh, Columbus, Ohio. Uh, I have to say, it's going to be a ninja turtle because I love turtles. <laughs> Good to have you here, Bob. Thanks for that. Uh, Ted, you're up next. Hey everyone, uh, my name's Ted Dunn uh, from New Hampshire, uh, one of um, Kyle's uh, irregulars uh, from the AI Learning Lab. So I've been uh, dragged over here. It's just my uh, first time being able to uh, 
to jump into uh, the salon. So uh, and enjoying it so far. Looking forward to it. Um, just uh, you know, by, uh, quickly my my background. I've been um, in the news research tech market research business for about 30 years or so um, with a long time with the Wall Street Journal and Dow Jones. Now we work for a tech market research firm, uh, uh, kind of packaging up that uh, research for the Wall Street and tech investor types. Um, very interested in uh, in AI and, and uh, you know, thanks to the AI Learning Lab, uh, always take a a few things away from that uh, each night, try it out and, um, you know, looking forward to um, hey, hanging out with you folks tonight. Oh, and if, if, if Chad GPT was a character, um, for me, it'd be one of those um, uh, Himalayan gurus, you know, you kind of climb the mountain seeking the answer, you get to the top. So uh, that's, that's, that's how it is for me. Great. Welcome to the salon, Ted. We appreciate it. RJ, you're up next. <laughs> Hi, can you hear me okay? Yep, we can hear you. Okay, cool. Sorry, I have a really low bandwidth DSL connection, so please forgive my lack of a, a visual. But uh, So I would first of all say that ChatGTP would be a shapeshifter, okay? I, actually, I like Chameleon better, but somebody already took that. So I would say a shapeshifter. And which shapeshifter? Well, I'd pick Mystique from the X-Men. So... Uh, <laughs> Anyway, um, so I would first of all like to share the, uh, uh, my own meetup link, which I just started, which is, if I could, it's for total, total, total beginners. So if anybody, if I'm allowed to share this, it's, um, here it is, it's, it's for uh, a meetup that I run every Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern time, because I'm in New Jersey, and it's for total, total, total beginners in AI. So I picked chat being chat gtp to help them out on that so i'm um, that's my whole goal is to learn as much as possible and help other people too yep. Love it. all right thanks rj we appreciate it uh drew shockley you're up next hi everyone i'm drew shockley i'm in chicago i'm a web developer pivoting more over to online communities um a plush robot is the character I would choose, and I'd make it plush so I could throw it against the wall really hard without breaking anything. So, so. Cool. Good to have you here, Drew. Appreciate it. Brad Perkins, you're up next. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Brad. i um, based here in Colorado. Um, I am a digital product strategist and designer um, and workshop facilitator um, that I run my own creative agency and uh, diving into AI and kind of working through changing business models, which we'll discuss uh, later uh, when we talk about guilds. And um, so the the one that I kind of am thinking of is uh, Woodhouse from Archer. Um, it's a lovable people pleaser that is treated like they mess up all the time when they actually don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good to have you back, Brad. Appreciate that. Jeffrey Carpenter, you're up. Hi, Jeff Carpenter from Providence, uh, Rhode Island. I work in cybersecurity. Specifically, I've been working on uh, how to take large language models and make uh, incident responders be able to be more effective in their work. Um, if it was a character, it would be P1 from the book, The Adolescence of P1. Yes. All right, welcome to the salon, Jeffrey. We appreciate it. Uh, Kelly Camp, you're up next. I'm Kelly. I'm from Dallas, Texas, but today I'm in East Texas camping. So uh, the bugs are getting me. So if you see me swatting, that's what's going on. <laughs> but it's lovely out here. Um, I am a serial entrepreneur. I've been a serial entrepreneur for the last 30 years. And this is my latest venture is I just started an AI agency. Um, I've got degrees in technical and creative writing. So when this thing opened up to the public, I thought I have found my sweet spot. Um, I love prompting. I love figuring out and solving puzzles. And this just checks all of my boxes. Um, but I was in advertising and marketing when I first started out and I left advertising for about 15 years and I came back and I missed the entire digital age. So wow. when AI came out, I thought I'm not letting this happen to me again. 
I'm not gonna let all those years of expertise become obsolete basically overnight. So I'm on a mission to help others not miss the boat this time. That's awesome. Well, uh, welcome to the salon, Kelly. We appreciate it. Uh, looks like we have Christine Cavalier. You're up. Hi, can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. I'm Christine. I live in the Philadelphia area in Pennsylvania. Um, I think that chat would be Babar the elephant, a little bit grown up. It, he is a behemoth and remembers a ton and um, is a great companion, um, a good friend almost. So I think, yeah, Babar the elephant. I, my background is, um, well, right now I'm content writing, but I was a systems administrator for a major manufacturer and, um, and I had a whole life after that in social media. So you can find me on Twitter, um, as purple car or anywhere else. Um, I don't call it X, um, but I am interested in, uh, AI cause I just want to see what I can do with it in terms of content. And um, I just ran into Kyle on TikTok the other night when I couldn't sleep and found out about this. So <laughs> it was really fun. So thanks a ton. Welcome. Yeah. yeah, welcome to the salon, Christine. Good to have you here. And last but not least is Kay Hudson. You're up next. My Chromebook sucks. So I'm Chris Hewson. I'm from Minnesota, Minneapolis. And I was trying to think of a, a fictional character that was super smart, but also a little bumbling or really, really earnest. I couldn't come up with one, but I'm going to give a shout out to Lisa Simpson, um, who has always been my shero. So I think I think it has potential. Yes. Good to have you back, Kay. I appreciate it. And I guess I'll hand it over to you, pal. All right. We're Denver. Denver. Yeah, just. Hi, guys. Uh, my name is Alan McLean. I'm a filmmaker. I also do commercial production uh, here in Colorado. Uh, I'm interested in AI because it's really transforming our industry. Obviously, Writers Guild came up with a new contract for the last uh, day or so. I haven't got to read it, but there's also. AI pieces within and just being real. As a character, I would call uh, ChatGPT um, the Steamboat Willie Mickey Mouse. <laughs> um, I say that because at the time it uh, revolutionized the industry of talking pictures for sound cartoon. But also, as time went on, it created an institution which we know is Disney, so around today and also has tremendous and significant copyright implications yeah. to the zip. And I feel like ChatGPT, we're about to open up this sort of Pandora's box of uh, copyright questions. Or Hornet's Nest. Hornet's Nest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi. Um, hi, I'm, my name is Jane. Um, I'm not going to say too much because I'm talking later. Um, so if I the first character I came up with was um, the actually the AI I bought uh, from the novel Cloud Cuckoo Land, which came out a couple of years ago. Um, and if you've read the book, you, uh, its name is Sybil, you know that it's like a very powerful AI bot, but the her heroine figures out a way to outsmart it. So um, ChatGPT in its own way is very powerful, but not smart enough. It's not yet. Anyway. It's good. Hi, everybody. It's DJ. Uh, this is C. I am a graphic designer for the art as well as generative artists on my own for my own company. And Chat GPT, as well as any other AI software program, is Barney Rubble to my Fred Flintstone. <laughs> That's great. That's awesome. That is awesome. All right, good. Thanks, everyone. Uh, if anyone online hasn't introduced themselves and, and want to jump in, just raise your hand. Uh, that's great. Uh, nice, nice to meet everybody and, and see familiar faces. So, so welcome. So, Leah, you want to do a little arts and crafts? Yes. Okay. So, we all dropped 
the character into our chat. There is a tool I've been playing with called PikaAI.com. If you scroll to the top of the chat, you'll see I dropped a link in. Uh, it's uh, www.pica-ai.com. You have eight free credits to use. Um, I think it's actually 10 before you, like 10, because there's a few before you sign up. So now what I want you to do, is, and this is a cool tool because you can put a prompt in and it'll generate art, but then it'll also give you prompts and suggestions to keep generating more and make new generations. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to go to pika-ai.com and it's an art generator. And if you go there, you'll see, describe what you want the AI to draw. And in that first box, what I want you to do is I want you to put in the character you just described, right? Put in as much information as you can think of and then give it a, si a style to, to describe it in. Hand-drawn art, um, abstract painting, uh, document photography. And then when you hit um, retry, when you hit generate, it will give you an image. And then it'll give you recommended prompts and you can keep trying it. At some point you'll need to sign up for an account and then you'll have eight more free generations. I think that's eight generations a day. And after about 10 generations, you should have an image that's pretty cool. I also dropped a oh. link for the Discord, um, for the Discord in. So you can then go to, disc to our Discord group. If you haven't signed up, please sign up. And then you can go down to the um, show and tell channel and show us what you made tonight on Pika. You can download it and then upload it to Discord. And, and yes, Bruce. I'm not seeing your um, your URLs in the chat. But okay, let me just drop in. I can drop it in down, um, down where we are right now. Bruce, oh, in, the lower, in the lower right hand corner of the screen share, there's a little um, talk bubble that'll open the chat. For the thing. Yeah. You'll be able to see it there. Um, the other thing I'm going to do, if, if uh, people don't know this code, so so here's our um, the, the AI Salon Discord. If you haven't been to Discord, the the link to join Discord is in the chat. And uh, you'll come in, and I think you get dropped in the introduce yourself section. So feel free to introduce yourself. But then down toward the bottom is a show and tell channel. And so the things you make in Pika chat, just drop them in the show and tell channel. All right. <laughs> okay. So. Let's. Okay. Um, so, so I want to talk talk about the, there's some big news has happened in the past essentially four days that I think take. Take all of what we've learned over the past nine months and essentially flush it down the toilet. Um, and, and then this first one here um, just, just sort of made very clear to me um, kind of how significant the, the, the battle for um, this industry is. So um, Amazon, their AWS division invested 1.5 billion into Anthropic which is if you go to Claude.ai, that's Anthropic behind that. Um, they reserved the right to invest up to up to four billion. So it's, it's effectively a four billion dollar investment because Claude, you know, Claude's going to spend that money. Um, and I, I assume that most of what that is is compute time and hosting and things like that. Um, what 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 it made clear to me, like it, like at first blush, I was like, oh, okay, so so AWS. AWS, Anthropic, Microsoft, OpenAI, like that, the, you know, they're kind of a very obvious competitive pair. But then I started thinking about like what else is there? And you've got 
you know, Microsoft and OpenAI, that's $10 billion. You've got Google and DeepMind. I forget what that was, but Google is going all in on this stuff. Tesla is effectively already an AI company, and then they're, you know, they're doing X AI. Um, and, and Elon Musk is going to be, you know, pulling in essentially the entire Twitter data set as the training model there. You've got Meta, Meta AI, right? And, you know, they're going hard on this. Then you have Amazon, that's probably. You then have Apple, their, their R&D budget in 2023 is $22.6 billion. And like a significant part of the increase in their R&D budget this year has gone straight to generative AI. And then, and then not as noise, no, and then you've got inflection. So Pi.ai, they raised $1.3 billion. I don't think they have a major partner, but $1.3 billion, the bulk of that is going to be spent on buying 22,000 GPUs to build a GPU farm to do their own foundation models. And then you've got Oracle bought a company called Cohere. So, so what this says to me is this industry ain't going anywhere. And you've got all of these major players and these major pairs that are sort of taking effectively startups and putting you know, massive institutional money behind it. So they're all making significant bets all at the same time. And so where I sit is I feel like we're the beneficiaries of that. Um, but but um, I, this, this to me just felt like further evidence of, you know, this isn't going anywhere. And whether or not we want to play with this stuff or not, it doesn't matter. It's coming, right? And it's, you know, even like the Writer's Guild thing and whatever producers agree to do and this and that. These tools are going to be a ubiquitous part of everything we do. Like, I, I don't feel like there's a there's a, a technology avenue that you can look at here that isn't going to be just infiltrated with all this AI stuff. So first thing I wanted to do was just kind of open up conversations and, you know, sort of get in this. And I'm curious what everyone's thoughts are, if, if you know any more sort of details, if you think there's other players that are missed here. I'm um, just curious if, if anyone has any thoughts on this. All right, we'll start with Kay Hudson. Go ahead. Yeah, so I was just going to say and ask, maybe we can do it in the chat, um, who has scared the living bejesus out of their boss yet? Talking about <laughs> 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 because I had a question. meeting today on a something and it was absolutely just hijacked and she was leaning in. She's like, I go, the good news is I, I channeled Kyle. <laughs> Everyone's behind. It's totally fine. <laughs> but but now she now, yeah. I saw the oh shit in her eyes. They go, our company's really slow. We got to move with it because a t you know a ten person company is gonna come and kick our ass. Let's go, let's go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, crazy. in re in response to that, my my own anecdotal experience with with AI and working with other people and using it in business has been kind of one of two reactions. One, one reaction is. We, wow, you know about AI, teach me everything you know. And the other reaction is usually, I don't ever want to hear those words out of your mouth again. <laughs> you know, and it's, there's not much in between. And so uh, it's really just kind of, and there's no real way to tell, you know, what kind of reaction you're going to get. So it's always kind of a fun surprise. Yeah, that's interesting. It's it's funny that the, the, the photo there, the dude with the beginning is near, that actually came out of a conversation when we were doing in AI Live the other night or from the learning lab, we were talking about, you know, the, the dude in, in Times Square with the end is near thing. I, I feel like, you know, there's that old camp that's like the robots are going to kill us. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, I think what this group is about is, you know, the other side of that coin. And, and reality is obviously somewhere in the middle, right? But, um, yeah. Okay, cool. Any other thoughts? I'm just wondering uh, if maybe you've heard what is what kind of AI research is Apple doing? I, I haven't heard anything about it. So, 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 so they're they're being very Apple about it. They're being very. Um, they're subtly flexing is the best way I can put it, Ken. So, 
when they when they announced their Vision Pro goggles, they didn't use the term AI once. They didn't use the term Metaverse once. They, they you know effectively redefined the industry as spatial computing. But one of the things they talked about is those goggles have uh, 16 cameras or sensors on them, or some some crazy amount of sensors, like four cameras in your eyes, six down in your face, two out, like it's crazy. One of the chips under your left eye is called the R1. It's, it's a reality chip. It's a, it's a machine learning chip. So what they talked a lot about was on-device processing, and it's really on-device machine learning processing. They did the same thing when they announced the iPhone 15, that they basically doubled the on-device processing capability you know, for machine learning stuff without using the term AI. So I think what Apple's doing is they're, they're building the hardware infrastructure to be able to run machine learning models locally. And then they've also got your data. So, you know, they're going to be able to put together agents that act on your behalf, access your data, keep that data private, which they've got a good story to tell there. And I, I think they're going to come out swinging hard and it's going to be hard to, to compete against them. But we'll see. Like, they, you know, they, they have been suspiciously quiet, but in, in every announcement that I've seen this year of theirs, there is some subtle, we're kicking ass and we're going to be taking names, but, but you know, remains to be seen. Okay, cool. Appreciate it. looks like, uh, Ted, you have your hand up. Yeah, it's just kind of following up on um, one of uh, what Kyle was mentioned of just the announcements from from this week. And I think in, I think it was a LinkedIn post that Kyle had. He said it's going to be a you know an amazing fall. And I was thinking back, you know, like when I was a when I was a kid, the big thick fall preview edition of TV Guide would come out, right? Would have all oh, the things that are going to be happening happening in the fall. Right? So I think this is now sort of replaced. Uh, you know, since uh, I don't think anyone watches TV anymore, I know I don't. Um, but you know, this is like the new fall season, right? That's so we're gonna have uh, ChatGPT is 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 rolling things out. Gemini from Google is gonna be coming. Anthropic just got this, you know, big uh, uh, investment, right? And then uh, Microsoft Copilot should be out, you know, uh, no, probably first. around November yeah. or yeah. so. And the amazing thing about Copilot, right? So there's a about 160 million Office 365 licenses is out there. If they, and it's $30 a month or $360 a year if the enterprise buys into it, right? So if only 20% of the licenses of, of uh, O365, you know, uh, took up uh, the, the co-pilot, there'd be $11 billion for Microsoft. So, yeah. you know, what, what, you know, what they, you know, the 10 billion or so that they gave, uh, you know, or, or invested into chat GPT, they're going to make that back, uh, almost, almost literally overnight when, when co-pilot, uh, comes out. So, and I believe for, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, entrants right now, the window is, is short. Because once Copilot is is starts becoming embedded into the way that we work, um, you know, it's it's you know, oh. I'm gonna put in the door. Oh. Oh, you froze. You froze a little at the end there, Ted. Apparently, I said, you know what, you, you, you know. Yeah, once Microsoft, you know, uh, has that, um, you know, early runway with with Copilot, and it becomes embedded in the way that we're all working, or those of us that are that are Microsoft folks in our in our workplace, um, it's going to be hard for the others entrants to get a foot in the door. So I think the window is is very short for others to to try to get the attention now. Absolutely. You got to be careful talking about Bill Gates and Microsoft, or else your connections go haywire. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, next next big news item. Um, if you haven't seen it, Dolly Three was announced. This should be coming out um, in a um, second. Okay, um, Dolly Three was announced. Um, so. This is OpenAI's image generation tool. Um, Dolly 2 is what they currently use. It hasn't been updated in at least a year. It's it's old and tired and, and it's not very good. Uh, if you make images at Bing, that's Dolly 2. 
Dolly three, I just I just want to walk you through some of this. I know some of you have seen this because I've talked about this a lot on on, on my live. And, and this got a lot of press, but I still think it's worth covering here. Um, so one of the things that it's really good at is capturing details of your prompt and putting them in there. So notice the text. The text is is not. Even with ideogram, which we've talked about, which can do text, it's not sort of as clear as this is here. But the prompt here, an illustration of an avocado sitting in a therapist's chair, check. Say, I just feel so empty inside, check. With a pit-sized hole in its center, and it's it's a hole. It's not a pit, it's right. It's So it like captured that nuance. The therapist, a spoon, scribbles notes, right? All that's there. So, so it, it really struck me just the level of detail that this captures and how how you know coherent and clear the images are, and then just just some of the other ones, you know, um, a folk band com uh, composed of anthropomorphic autumn leaves. Um, this one is staggering. The prompt on this one is you know in front of a deep black backdrop, a figure of middle years, her tongue and skin rich and glowing, is captured mid twirl. Her curly hair flowing like a storm behind here. Elsie, Elsie, the Her attire resembles a whirlwind of marble and porcelain fragments illuminated by the gleam of scattered porcelain shards, creating a dreamlike atmosphere. The dancer man. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. And then you zoom in on this image, and it's like, yeah, that's all in there. This is this is sorry to interrupt. This is Dolly's examples to us to see. Yeah. So, okay. so to be fair. This is not out yet, but but the people that I've seen that have been playing with this say that it's you know this is absolutely what they're choosing to show. So okay. is it going to yeah. be like this? I don't know. We'll see. Okay. Um, so so yeah. So take it all with a marketing grain of salt. Th this is the equivalent of uh, Google saying that Gemini is going to be five times better than GPT four. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, the other thing that they do is is sort of take a prompt that they sort of break down the prompt and sort of point out where the details are um, for the for the elements of that prompt. And in particular, the grumpy vendor, a tall, sophisticated man, is wearing a sharp suit, sports a noteworthy mustache, which it is, um, is animatedly conversing on his steampunk telephone, right? So it, it just it's it's capturing a lot of stuff. Um, to the left is Dolly 2, that feels like what Dolly 2 generates. Yeah. To the right is Dolly 3, right? And, and the prompt here, an expressive oil painting of a basketball player, dunking, depicted as, as an explosion of a nebula. That first picture, he's not dunking, he's, he's clearly just missed a dunk, right? You know? And then with the, the Dolly 3 one is, is, you know, pretty remarkable. And then the last thing I want to show is, uh, is this video. So one of the hardest things to do, and, and CJ, I know that you you've worked hard at getting some of this predictability now, is is the ability to do predictable characters. And like once you've established a character, say, hey, I'd like to have that yeah. character, you know, remain throughout a series of prompts. Well, again, assuming that it does this. So I'll pause it right there. My daughter says its name is Larry. Can I see more like this, right? So in the context of prompting, you're sort of telling ChatGPT, oh, that's, that's, that's a character. Right? Right. So, you know, apparently it does. So, so this is all going to happen within GPT-4. I think from what I heard from Abran, who's who's he, he spoke at the salon here. Um, he's one of the ambassadors for OpenAI. It sounds like it might be a plug in. So you'll be you'll be within chat GPT-4 and then Dolly 3 will generate images within the context of a larger conversation. So it's going to be able to take in 
the context of the conversation as it's generating images. So if I think about, you know, someone working on a writing project, we're going to storyboard or illustrate it, you know, it, it can know a deep, however big the context window is of the story. Mm -hmm. um, so, so anyway, so that's Dolly 3. And then two days later, um, ChatGPT or OpenAI announces multimodal ChatGPT and that this is going to roll out in the next two weeks. So this was yesterday's thing announcement. I, I know. It's, it's so fast. It's too fast. It's too fast. So ChatGPT can now see, hear, and speak. Um, so, so this is, if you played with Pi, this is very much like Pi. So in the ChatGPT app, you'll be able to just talk to it. Right, so you'll be able to, able to have that conversation. Um, you'll be able to take, you know, anything that you've written and select the voice and just play it. Can you guys hear this online? Mm -hmm. No, no, we can't. No. Can you now? No, still don't hear it. Okay. Oh. It's gonna be so good. It's gonna be so good. It's gonna be so, so awesome. It's gonna be freaking awesome. You don't even know how good it's gonna be. Baby sister. Now? Milo's eyes widened with excitement. Yep, now we can hear it. Okay, cool. So let me go back and I'll just play this, this dude. Residing in Meadowville. Larry spread joy and color wherever he rode. We want to hear a bedtime story. Tell us a story about the super duper sunflower hedgehog named Larry. Start with telling us a little bit about him. Larry was a unique hedgehog unlike any other. He had. Right. So the continuing the story of Larry there, but it's, you know, it's very much like Pi, just, you know, talk to it. Uh, you can take text, and then you can select from uh, a series of voices. And a sister? Know. Will she chase tails like so I this do? Is like eleven oh, laps. Oh, she'll have her own quirks. You'll teach her, won't you, Milo? Already dreaming of the adventures they'd share. So, so we do that. Um, then you can have a chat about images. Th this. This example that they show is just ridiculously simple. So, so it's basically like, I can't lower the seat of my bike. Can you help me do that? But, but I think it's interesting that they chose it because it's so simple. This is clearly geared for people that are like, why would I ever use ChatGPT? Like, yeah. this is yeah. just like a dumb, simple, like, oh yeah, I can see that. So I'll, I'll play a bit of this here because again, I think it's, it's like, again, don't, don't, don't sort of think so much about this example. It's like, wait, what are the implications of the fact that it can see now and you can interact like this? They also said this was sped up. So I, so I assume that means the image recognition is slow.
and to see. And then, you know, you combine its ability to see here and listen and talk, and then you add Dolly 3 to that plus GPT-4. So, so you now have, with the exception of video, you've got, you know, a, a fairly powerful multimedia thing. They, they talk a bit about safety here that, that with the synthesis stuff, it's going to be fairly limited initially. You'll be able to do the chat with chat GPT thing, and you'll be able to pick a voice, but you know, you have to be able to really do your own. But I assume that's coming, right? Sure. You know, hey, Jen does that right now. So, um, so there's another one. I'd love to just, you know, in seeing that, or you know, if you've seen it before, been thinking about it for a couple of days. I'm just curious what anyone thinks is. <laughs> this is mean. <laughs> What are we supposed to do here, people? Anyone? Bueller? <laughs> Thoughts? Oh, I see that there's somebody We're brain dead. All right, so I, uh, I went um, to the uh, Arizona Science Museum this past weekend, and in their uh, astronaut science space section, they actually have um, an AI that is that talk to respond back that you just kind of showed that was up there. Um, zero lag time, really no errors in the conversation, but the conversation had to be geared all around space and being an astronaut. So you couldn't ask, you know, tell me about M&Ms. Right? It wasn't giving response to that, but anything basically had to do was the science of space. It was pretty instantaneous in, in the talking and it was a full life-size illustration of a person that was talking oh, back, talking to, back yeah. to you. Wow, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Other thoughts? I wonder, um, on the so video cool. surveillance side of things, um, if you know law enforcement would would use that, would would the vision part would would use that to you know uh, kind of get 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 the image of the person they're looking for, and then be able to. You know, kind of reverse engineer that to, um, you know, kind of put out an APB or you know, kind of use that same technology uh, for for law enforcement. I think I, I think a lot of that stuff's being done right now. That, that tech's been out for a while. That, that, that GPT specifically said um, they're not going to do faces for a while. Yeah, yeah. Um, facial recognition, listening for gunshots, guy. Yeah. Oh, and at the pace that we're moving, what does a while mean? <laughs> like yeah. oh, a couple of months. Oh, yes. All right, looks like uh, Beth, you have something you'd like to add? Yeah, um, it's it's not uh, exactly what was just said, but um, but again, I said I had gone to um, a workshop by someone who uh, has been an alpha tester for the vision part. And one of the examples that she gave was um, asking for a bias assessment um, in a photo. And one of the responses that she got back was um, the person standing in that body position is, uh, is a white uh, male and the person sitting being talked to is a black female and this will not uh, right, like recommend you look at the <laughs> intersections oh, of wow. this. So, like that was their bias assessment of this image. Huh. So, uh, wow. Wow. did they say when this was expected out? In the two next weeks. two weeks. Within two weeks. So basically, oh, wow. it's going it's to yeah, exactly, exactly. And then, and then, Gemini is likely going to come out, you know, sometime in the next two weeks or a month. And so that's Google's version of a multimodal, apparently GPT-4 level quality thing. And then as Ted talked about, November 1st is general availability of Copilot across all of Office 365. So within the next month, it's, it, it's effectively like the game changes again. Like it's, it's almost like we start over. Now, I assume you could just keep going with ChatGPT, but I, what I'm trying to figure out is, how different is it when you don't have to go over here to make images and over here to do text and voice synthesis? When it's when it's all within the experience, you know, does the experience of writing shift to a multimodal thing? And, and like, what are the skills? And what's prompting look like? And I got, I got 
I mean, uh, yeah. it looks like Brad has uh, something you'd like to contribute. Yeah, I'm just I'm just thinking, and this is again like we change every two weeks on like what direction am I supposed to go in, but I think it all circles back, and I know that we all hear this that communication is going to be the most important piece, like how we talk, how we write, like because at the end of the day we still have to have inputs to this thing, and if we don't explain it well then it's only going to do as well as what we do. So the skill sets in how you write, how you communicate, how you delegate are going to be the parts that sustain, I guess, through time. And so if you're not good at those skills, really need to start developing those now uh, so that you can keep up and, you know, in this fast. Eric? Yeah, I was just going to add on to what Bradley's saying. So I was listening to a podcast with uh, Stephen Wolfram, and he said this multiple times, but he said that expository writing is the number one skill to have. And uh, I just that, and I think about that a lot and try to focus on that. Yeah. Yeah, I was just picking you back on what you guys have said and also what Ted had shared a little bit earlier. I think the Microsoft piece, the Microsoft Copilot piece, I think is massively significant because certainly the communication piece, the writing piece is going to be for, foremost amongst the skills that can be utilized and you know, generated through AI. And the fact that that's like a business product that people already know as opposed to third party products relatively new in the marketplace. I think there's going to be a significant amount of people that want to get into it immediately because they know there's going to be a market advantage to actually using these tools within um, the Microsoft platform. Yep. Uh, looks like RJ, you have something you'd like that? So, okay. Yeah. Sorry. It takes me a while to get off a of mute. Uh, so I think the big thing, for the short term is going to be a person's going to want to choose a platform that will allow them to produce reproducible style kind of uh, either images or whatever. Because a lot of these platforms right now for images or whatever are putting out stuff that just varies too much. And it doesn't maintain the control. So people are going to be looking for control in what they output. So whatever platform comes up with the most repeatable kind of results where you could have a series of images that all blend together and they from one scene to another to another, multiple different iterations, they all look like they all fit together. That's going to be the big drawer because people are they're not going to want to put up with images or whatever content that varies too much and goes off 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 the track yeah yeah that's good Jane. um when kyle was doing it uh, like kind of showing these demonstrations i was like okay dolly three is slightly better than dolly two and like they can, what i can tell a story about a hedgehog like it's, it's just like they're they're competing for like slightly better slightly better slightly better tools and I'm like, okay, so what's the next thing? Like, what's the next level? Like, where? Like, what's the next stage of evolution? I I, I go back to um, a speaker we had. Uh, I can't remember his name because I scheduled him, but um, <laughs> he kind of talked about he talked about how like electricity existed for like 50 years, um, you know, and then Henry Ford came along and like industrialized it, and then that's when like it like hit the mainstream. And I like what I feel like. What we're seeing tonight is is just like billions of dollars getting poured into like slightly better models. Like, I mean, <laughs> those are nice pictures, but like, it's not changing my life. You know, and like, we're still waiting for the Henry Ford. It's like that next level hasn't been created yet. And I I appreciate the competition, but I want to like, you know, I also don't want it to move too fast. But also like, all right, what's the next? What's the next thing? It's only been <laughs> ten months. You're already <laughs> no. the next. <laughs> Peter, you have something you'd like to add? Yeah, two two things. I wanted to kind of add to the people that said uh, a, a skill that you need is um, 
expository writing or or being able to express what you want well i think it it actually already um i am using it to help me use it so i don't try to write something and then have it respond what i do is i say can you help me you know think about this thing that i want to write about or or uh generate in mid-journey and and then it'll like it'll give me kind of prompts and questions that I feed back the answers to, right? So it's an iterative process. I think the the skill is actually not just being able to do a one shot, you know, I, I can tell the bot what to do. Um, it's how to have a conversation with a bot and how to keep leveling up uh, your understanding of what you're trying to, to say as it's doing doing helping you do that, right? Kind of similarly, I just had this breakthrough with Midjourney that I, I realized I, I generate tons of, of Midjourney images. And for the longest time, when I started using uh, image generators, it was like, huh, uh, instead of having to use a brush in Photoshop, uh, I can, you know, I can ask it to draw the picture that I would have wanted drawn. And I realized just like a couple days ago, I'm starting to use uh, styles and um, uh, de descriptions and moods and things like that. Those are my brushes now. That's what I, I, I manipulate. I don't manipulate pixels and I don't manipulate shapes. I actually manipulate like big chunks of like, I want this picture to look you know, dark and foreboding, or I want uh, I want angular edges and like lots of bright reflections and stuff like that. And that it just kind of blew my mind because it used to be that you know if you wanted specular reflections, you had to like understand a whole bunch of stuff about physics and you had to practice, you know, getting the the shading right and all that kind of stuff. All of that is gone, and I don't even try to ask it to do that. It just comes out of the box that way. And so now I'm I'm like a level or two or three up from from creating art. You know, I'm like I'm, I'm doing an art director's job and our art director's director's job kind of. It's really amazing. Uh, yeah, I just uh, kind of wanted to go back to something that Jane had mentioned about wanting the next big thing, and it kind of got me thinking. You know, Kyle responded with, "It's only been ten months," and. You know, just thinking about that, it's really kind of mind blowing because I think we're coming up on the one year anniversary for ChatGPT, which makes me think about, you know, how long did it take for the internet to adopt it, for people to adopt the internet, for the internet to evolve into where it is now? How long did it take for cloud computing to evolve to where it is now? And then I, th I look at uh, AI and it's like, it's on a scale that we've never seen before it's exponentially growing and it just makes me think all of this has happened within 10 months not even one year look where we're at now it makes me think where are we going to be in year two where are we going to be in year five where are we going to be in year 10 i don't i don't think we can even necessarily comprehend it i, I wonder sometimes like if the next evolution is that ai comes up with that that we don't understand the Model T4 and we don't understand how that all integrates together. And we won't be the ones that figure it out. We are going to build the tool that's going to figure out and then we'll witness it. Yeah. That's great. That's okay. a good point. One, good one, point. one more, Jeff. Let's, let's get you and then, then I want to move on. Because we're oh, done. yeah, really quick. I, I think, I personally think that evolution is going to be that everyone will have their own sidekick and it will be like their personal assistant going everywhere and it will understand, you know, if you have a question or want to write something, you, you won't have to learn how to, to talk to it. It will understand whatever you say to it. So if you want to write a story, you have to have to give your creativity and, and tell what kind of story you want. It's going to be very simple, I, I think. And um, it's just going to be like, like, talking to a person and asking them to do certain things and figure think and they'll figure it out that's that's what i think about that yeah yeah i i think that that's one of the things that apple's going to be really good at they, they could prove me wrong but it, it seems to me that their their ability to generate an assistant you know an agent for you that's really you know, human and supportive is is, is going to be there okay so so what i'd like to do is shift gears and talk about um, the 
the I think this is kind of a this is it's appropriate we're coming up you know we're getting all these new um, you know multimodal LLMs and things like that we're, we're going to get multimodal AI salon now so um, so I want to talk about a couple of things first one is um, I'm not weird under regular uh, <laughs> Tobias is here Tobias did that that uh, t-shirt design. Um, so before we get into guilds, um, one of the things that, that we've done historically with, with the salon is basically said, hey, you know, is anyone willing to be an organizer? Jane was one, Ken was one. We have a lot of people that just sort of stepped up and said, you know, I'll do it. And, and you know, we all are just, we all sort of do what we do. And, and one of the things that, that hit us was, well, wait a minute, we've actually got really specific things that we need done. And we, we haven't really sort of put a call out to the community to say, hey, is anybody good at this? Is anybody willing to do this? Um, so there's there's two that are kind of biggies that I think we, we really need some help on. Um, the first one is I would love to find someone who um, is willing to be a speaker scout um, and a speaker manager. So someone who looks for, hey, here's someone who might be interesting to, to speak at the salon. As we roll out these guilds, guild leaders and guild masters may have people that they want to bring in. So someone who can coordinate speaking. So if that's something where you feel like you've got skills for that, that would be something you would enjoy. Um, let me know. So I, I guess the way we'll do this with the organizers thing, uh, if, if, you're, if you're willing to take on one of these roles, um, post it in the Discord underneath in the introductions channel, or if you're not on Discord yet, shame on you. If you're if you're not on Discord yet, just pop it in the chat, and if you can, if you could grab that, if, any, if anyone puts anything in the chat. So that's that one. And the second one is is a similar kind of role, but it's it's a volunteer manager. So what I'm going to be talking about tonight is rolling out guilds, and what the, the guild masters are going to be talking about is their guilds. We're going to have more and more people, you know, serving in some sort of organizational role. And I would love to have someone who can effectively be a project manager for, you know, we've got meetings, we've got people, we want to make sure we have contact information, things like that. So if you've got project manage, manager kind of skills and would be willing to be someone who can, you know, just sort of, you know, basically maintain the spreadsheet of the volunteers, that would be awesome We're looking for that. Um, and then on the social front, this, this could be, if you're, if you're into social media and you're willing to support, this could be something where you can do multiple of these, but these are, these are discrete functions we need, and I think they could also be individual people. So a LinkedIn manager, a YouTube manager, a Twitter manager, a Dis Discord mod, uh, and, then, and then meetups is the, is the other thing that um, is painfully neglected <laughs> by me and a lot of the organizers. Um, so anyway, so I don't want to stay too long on this. If you're willing to, to support and just kind of organize, these are some specific things we need. Just let us know what you'd be interested in, and that would be great. Okay, so quickly, I'm going to I'm going to introduce uh, guilds, and um, guilds we we introduced a little bit last meeting, um, but guilds are basically sub communities within the salon. So the whole idea of the salon was to bring together a community, and and one of the things that we felt was there was an opportunity missing for people to be able to, you know, find an area of focus, to be able to, to, be able to dig in. Um, we also love the idea of the guilds being led by a person, a guild master. We talk about being AI adventurers, guild seems right, it's kind of a D&D &D thing, it's all good. But, but if you think about the what, where the Discord has been historically, we've got channels for tools, right? We've got the image tool, we've got writing tools, and we've got prompting. And, it's, and it, it was a very tool-focused thing. And part of the shift we want to do with guilds is that, you know, Jane's going to be um, uh, heading up the, the Writer's Guild. The, not the WGA, <laughs> but the AI <laughs> WGA, oh, right? right? And, and, and she's, like gonna, she's going to bring like her experience. Yeah, it's good. WGA. Right? <laughs> <laughs> she's going to be bringing her experience. And it's, it's as much about Jane as it is about the writing as it is about the tools. And I think that idea of, of just... You know, us, you know, getting to know one another and, and supporting one another is really important. And then the other thing about guilds that we want them to have is we want them to be kind of independent, have their own agendas, their own meetings. It'll be led by the guild master, but it's ultimately up to each of these sub-communities to decide 
Are you going to have in-person meetings? Are you going to have weekly meetings, monthly meetings, no meetings? Are you going to have contests online? Are you going to go Twitter bomb? Like, doesn't it doesn't matter, right? So, so that I'm really excited about. In terms of um, the the guild leadership, so if you're interested in being a guild master, let us know, or or you might be a co-lead. Um, we're going to have on on non-salon nights. So basically, on the off Tuesday will be when when the, the guild leadership meets. Um, if you're interested in being in guild leadership, let us know and what topic you're interested in. And what the organizers will do is we'll say, okay, is there already an existing guild where you can support that? Or if, there, if there's truly a unique one that stands alone, we'll, we'll create that. And the only reason we're doing that is so it doesn't just turn into chaos where you've got a bunch of overlapping guilds. Which we want to kind of roll these out slow. It's a bit of an experiment right now. Um, and then the other thing that we'll do is we'll, we'll start to shift the salon meetings that have slots for, for guild updates and things like that. So a guild master might say, hey, I've got a speaker that I want to bring in and they're going to do a full major slot or I might just want to give an update or things like that. But, but that way, rather than relying on just you know a handful of people saying, here's interesting news, we might have guild people going, here's what's going on with writing tools, or here's what's going on with you know, image tools or this and that. So with that, Tonight, we are excited to roll out um, five guilds. And the five guilds that we're rolling out are Making Art with Leah, Writing with Jane, um, AI 101 with Peter, AI in Business with Ken, and Entrepreneurship with Bradley. Um, we're going to sort of turn the meeting over to each of them to talk about um, their guild and what their vision is and kind of who they are. And then what's going to happen uh, after that is this. I'm going to jump over to Discord and show you how to, how to join a guild. Um, it's a little wonky because it's Discord, but it's actually kind of cool. You basically just click an emoji to join a guild. And, uh, and with that, we'll just, uh, we'll just take off. So, Leah, you want to talk about making art? I do. Um, absolutely. So, hi. I'm Leah. My my sign tonight says Triceratops 9 because I'm doing it from my Triceratops 9 browser because I clicked on it from our Discord. That's my sort of Discord <laughs> digital name, but I'm Leah Fasten. Um, I do um, host the salon, uh, which I love. I've been a commercial photographer for, uh, we'll, we'll call it 15 years, but it's been longer. I help brands tell their stories through imagery. I know a lot about photography. Um, when I started noodling around with AI, I realized that this is going to shift and change everything we know about making art. Um, I've been using Midjourney quite a bit to play around with photography and training data. Um, and I will share some of that as well. I've also been using it to make surface designs and launched a spoon flower site um, that includes some of the designs. And I can put those links in, or maybe I'll just share I'll share my screen if I can figure out how to do that and show you a quick overview of my photography and then a quick overview of some of the stuff I've been doing um, with Stable Diffusion. And then we can look at a few of the designs I've made with Spoonflower. And then I'll talk a little bit more about how I'm seeing the art making guild. Um, let me see if I can share my screen. Here we go. Okay. Let's see if this works. Yep. Okay. Do you see my website? Yep. Yep. Okay. We see it. Okay. All right. Great. Okay. So I'm just going to give you a very quick overview of some of the photography that I've made. LeahFasten.com is my website. You can certainly go explore. There's lots of images um, on the site. I have a very improvisational way that I approach image making. And I have spent years and years thinking about where does imagery come from? Where does creativity come from? Where does where, um, where does our voice come from? Um, I'll drop the link uh, in the chat. You can check it out more. So thinking about my style making imagery, I've been working on training data sets using existing imagery. 
Um, and I've shown some of this work in the salon, but I've been working on creating images using stable diffusion that I feel like have some sense of my voice to them, right? If we train on my own images, can we get lighting that feels like mine? Um, I haven't focused that much on the subjects per se, but more on the lighting and the feeling of the images. This is a project I've been working on uh, called Women That Don't Exist. Um, and these are all generated using stable diffusion and various data models that um, I found. And I'll post that as well, and you can have a look through there. And then finally, some of the other work I've done with generative AI is I've been using AI to make repeating surface patterns, and I've created a store on a site called Spoonflower, and you can order um, all kinds of products. You can order wallpaper and sheets and pillows and all kinds of interesting things. Um, and I, these are mostly made in mid-journey. I've been playing around with using some stable diffusion and also doing some illustrating um, and bringing it into uh, mid-journey. So I start with my own illustrations and then bring them in. But mid-journey is a really important player in these illustrations. Um, and again, I'll, I'll drop that link into the chat and you can look, look through it more. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen because what I've been thinking a lot about um, see if I can stop presenting. Okay, so a really big part of my creative process is uh, free write, free writing, journaling. Um, there is a practice called morning pages where um, I will journal for about a half hour every morning right when I wake up. Through the writing and through the journaling, I find that I find my voice and it's always interesting in how that applies to the creative work I'm doing. So I've been working with Ali on kind of like, how do we use generative art in the way we might use creative writing. That's right, Christine, Julia Cameron Mormon Pages, thank you, um, from the artist way. So what I'm interested in doing is creating some process around that. And so the Guild is gonna start out with a six week program on Sunday afternoon evenings. I'm looking at my schedule and put that in. And we will use writing and journaling as a tool to also use mid journey to make art. We'll be translating the two and going back and forth. I don't totally know where this is going. We're gonna experiment <laughs> and see how it goes. Um, it's really important that you know mid journey a little bit, that you're comfortable with mid journey and you can, you know, you can get up to speed pretty quickly with it. It won't be that technical of a group when we meet. The um, guild will then, during the week, we can um, talk prompts and prompt crafting and more technical stuff. The idea of the meeting on Sunday nights will really be a creative exercise. Um, to see what we can do when we start mixing mid-journey with writing and prompting. And so please awesome. join the guild. And then yeah, during awesome. the week, we'll keep up with it. Yeah, and I'm, ex awesome. I'm so excited to have you guys on board and doing it. And I will also be inviting other people in from outside to become part of the salon. I'm hoping that having it on a weekend, we can get some more people there who can't come on Tuesday nights. And I will invite you guys to as well. And then we'll see how numbers go and we'll see how the six weeks go. And then we'll figure out what, what it looks like next. Yep. Perfect. That's awesome. That, that's that's really exciting. And and yeah. so and so um, again, I, I'll show you how to join the guild right after everyone presents. So so let's just move right on, Jane. All right. Tell, uh, tell wow, us that's that's amazing. Oh, yeah. Um, let's, oh yeah. Let's let's right here. get you. Okay. Yes. There we go. All right. Uh, so my name is Jane Endicott. I've been an organizer with the salon since February. Um, but mostly I've been a, a writer. I would say I started when I was 12 years old. I started scribbling in notebooks, pen and paper, old fashioned way. Um, and just like you're reading right now. <laughs> exactly. I still do it. I have a really messy notebook in front of me. And, um, I, that's how I, I, when I was a teenager, that's how I got my 10,000 hours. And I just, I just scribbled in notebooks and, um, I went to college. I was an English major. Um, and, which is more useful than you would imagine. Um, and I, I also write fiction in my, you know, on my own time. Uh, so I graduated from college in 2006, 2006, 06. And at the time, like copywriting was an occupation, uh, but it's not, not what it is today. It was like mostly like ad copy. Um, and uh, I need to hang on, like get rid of some visual stuff here. Okay, um, yeah, so, 
and over, you know, it was, it was right before like the iPhone, like we had Facebook, but we, we still had to use it on a browser, like content writing and online marketing, like wasn't, wasn't an industry yet. So I came out of college in 2006 with like no idea what I wanted to do with my life. And so I kind of farted around with some different jobs and by 2016, uh, like online marketing, like it, it was a thing. And now all of a sudden, like everyone needs content all the time, every day on every channel, <laughs> like in every kind of form. So now like, like, holy cow, like there's like so many opportunities out there, like more than I can count. Um, and so it was amazing to me, like I was able, you know, I, that, that in the, when I graduated from college, like that job didn't exist. And then 10, like 10 years later, I, I, it, it just was there. Right. And, um, and so fast forward. So anyway, yeah, like I, for the last several years, I've been writing for like websites and social media, like using my creative writing skills and applying that to creative marketing. Um, and so in January, I met Kyle at a creative mornings meetup and he kind of said some stuff about AI and I was like, um, okay, like I'm a copywriter, like, do I need to find a different job? <laughs> and he was like, you should have been using this yesterday. <laughs> and I was like, gotcha. So I went home that day and I started using chat GPT. Um, and it's like, I, uh, it's it started out slow at first and like I was kind of just using it as like the source dictionary like what's a word for this how do you explain that and in the some of the copywriting that I, I do I have to like explain complicated like mostly like business and finance uh, like ideas complicated concepts in simple ways that like ordinary people can, can understand so chat should be able to use that and then um, without spending too much time talking about it, I, I actually figured out how to like make it right for me. So basically like I didn't have to write anymore. It just wrote for me. And so at the time I was writing, um, I'm still doing this job, but I was writing five to seven scripts a day, videos like short video scripts for a client. Um, and that in, in a matter of months, that has gone up to 25 scripts per day. And I've done that in roughly the same amount of time that I did it when I was just doing it on my own. So I, I, I like multiply five times like the amount of output that I put out per day, but I only added maybe like one or two hours to like my billable hours. And so that was like, holy shit, this is like, this is, and, and what's, what's really struck me, you know, that was March. That was in March that I was writing like seven scripts per day. That was like six months ago, Crazy. you know, and, and I Ken said something about the, um, you know, kind of the, the speed of adoption, right? Like it takes a hundred years for one technical technological thing. Maybe it took 10 years for internet or I don't know. And like AI, like it's already happened. It has already happened like that, that kind of, speed of adoption and then the, that kind of that next phase of evolution is it's going to be days weeks month like it's you know going to be before my birthday in november I, like you know that's how fast it's going to be so you know if you're a writer like and you're scared or uncertain like what i can tell you from like six months of choosing this is like it's already happened it's not about um you know whether when it comes, when it comes <laughs> it's not about like, oh, I'm not going to use ChatGPT. Like that is already outside of your control, and that has that decision has already been made for you. And and the only thing that you can control is, uh, I still believe that it's it's early enough, like that um, that we we can still shape the future. Um, so. I, and I think, anyway, I don't want to go down the rabbit hole. We can still shape the future. So um, so I'm running the Writing Guild, and, and what exactly do I mean by writing? So in, in my years of conversation, um, one of the most common things I hear is, you know, somebody say, like, oh, I'm not a good writer because I'm bad at grammar. And 
I like that's it's you know I I don't know how to use there there and there or something like that. And I always feel like that this completely, um, you know, misses the mark on what exactly writing is because like I've been reading books since I was a kid, and like grammar, structure, language, you know, vocabulary, like all that stuff. Technical the technical details is really important, um, but. That's not why I read books. Like, I don't read books because I like how people use titans. Like, I read books because there's a human being on the other end who's telling me a story and who can connect me in, like, a genuine human way. And so what I want to do with this guild is, like, we're, we're definitely going to talk about the tools, like, how to use ChatGPT. ChatGPT and Po, like, that's what I've been heavily using on, so that's what I'm going to start with. I'm sure there's some other stuff out there, like, I've already written down uh, Notion. Someone mentioned Notion, so I'm going to go like play with that today or you know later on. But um, you know, just for the sake of simplicity. Okay. Anyway, uh, I'm told that I'm running out of time. So anyway, <laughs> uh, my call to action. So uh, the writer strike is 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 starting to like end. Maybe there's been like reach an agreement. So go on to ChatGPT, use it for free, and write a poster slogan for the WGA using ChatGPT. Cool. Um, you can be snarky about it, or if you want to write it for the billionaires, that's fine. I don't care. Uh, just use it. Uh, go play around with it. OK. And then share that in the Writer's Guild chat? Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. My, yeah. OK, cool. Yeah. Yeah, so so write that, then share it in the Writer's Guild channel. Awesome. Thank you, Jane. Yeah. All right, next up, Peter, AI 101. The heck are you going to teach there? <laughs> it's a good question. Um, the the homework assignment, if you uh, get to the uh, AI 101 channel, um, tell me what AI means to you. Uh, I, I, I'm sure that uh, there's an A word and an I word that means something to you. Uh, tell me what AI 101 is. Um, so hi, I'm Pete Kaminsky. Uh, I've been in technology for a long, long time. Um, uh, AI, LLMs and the image generators remind me a lot of uh, when people started using PCs uh, back in the late 70s, early 80s. Uh, uh, and when people were using the internet uh, in the early 90s. Uh, and, and I was there for both of those things and got to help people kind of onboard to this new technology. Um, another technology that's near and dear to my heart is wikis. Uh, so I, I helped, a I had a wiki company uh, in the early 2000s and uh, we got businesses uh, all wikied up back then. Um, but that's not as famous as the computers or the internet. So this is another opportunity. AI is another opportunity to explore this whole new space uh, that is just fascinating. And I, I know I know we say this a lot, and Kyle says it a lot, especially. Um, it, it sounds, it feels like you're behind. None of us are behind because we're we're talking about it and doing stuff with it right now. So my vision for AI 101 is, I feel like, I, I'm not sure exactly what what's going to happen there, but I feel like obviously it's a kind of an on ramp to AI. Uh, let's learn about LLMs. Uh, let's learn about image generators, image synthesizers. Uh, what they're good for, what they're not good for, you know, demystify them. They're not a big deal. Just start using them. They're fun. They're they're easy. They're interesting, and real soon now, everybody's going to have to know how to use it. In the same way that everyone, you know, at at some point, everyone had to learn how to use a computer, um, even though it was weird to start. Everyone had to learn how to use a web browser and, and email and stuff like that, even though it was weird to start. So. From my experience back in those revolutions, the people who kind of get it, or at least are interested in it early, um, are the ones that need to like reach back and help other people. You know, hey, I figured this thing out. It wasn't that scary, and look what I can do now. You know, um, so I want AI 101 to be kind of an environment where uh, we onboard ourselves and then onboard others to this you know, brave new world. It's super interesting, super exciting, uh, super, super fun. Um, I'm expecting that uh, I'll have at least one hour a week uh, where we get together and uh, you know, talk about getting 
starting uh, AI, starting to use AI, and helping other people start to use AI. Um, full disclosure, uh, this is something Kyle and I talked a little bit about. Um, I've got a startup with uh, two other friends. Uh, we, we've got a startup that is in the business of uh, creating classes and uh, giving uh, uh, streaming on-demand video classes and also uh, live classes, mentoring sessions, and stuff like that. So um, uh, in the context of uh, AI 101 here, um, we're not going to be charging things. And I, I'm pretty sure I, I'm expecting that we'll actually uh, have like 100% off coupons for people who start here and go over to our, uh, uh, our school, basically our little academy. Um, uh, and at the same time, I, I think I want to feed that back. Uh, I'm learning how to, I, it's, I've been doing community stuff for a long time, uh, for a couple of years now, very intensively online, helping people get bootstrapped up into being online, using Zoom, using wikis. Um, all of that's been pro bono, which has been great and wonderful. But I think as people get on board, um, especially people who have the ability to pay to get onboarded. Uh, so if you're in a business, uh, maybe you talk to your boss or your boss talks to you and says, hey, I need you to learn this thing and I'm willing to pay somebody to help you learn. Mm -hmm. I, I think there's an opportunity for everybody here to be a teacher um, and for at least some of you to learn how to teach other people and maybe not make a living out of that, but at least cover the cost, hopefully, of you know your ChatGPT Plus uh, subscription and, and your Mid Journey <laughs> subscription and stuff like that, because that's kind of where I got started. You know, it it would be nice to just make break even on, on uh, kind of the expenses of of really diving into AI. Um, I have to say, I I've, I've you know, coming from you know coming from the land of of uh, monthly expenses. 20 bucks a month for ChatGPT Plus seemed like a mind-blowing thing. It's like, wow, that's a lot of money because that's more than, you know, like video services, more than my music service. It's, you know, but it's, it gives that much back to my life every month that it's worth it. I would be doing it even if it wasn't a business, business expense. Midjourney is kind of like that for me. It's not quite as, as, um, uh, as crucial to my life, but uh, I have so much fun and joy out of just navigating through uh, hundreds of like creative environments that Midjourney and I can come up, Midjourney and ChatGPT and, and I come up with, um, that it's it's worth like seeing if there's you know I I think putting out a little bit of money into this it's like kind of like buying a PC back in the day, um, or figuring out how to to spend twenty bucks a month on an ISP back in the day. It's something that sounds crazy to other people, but I kind of think it's worth it. And um, not maybe not for everybody, but um, uh, so that's my pitch. Um, AI 101, I'm hoping to see folks there. Looking forward to it. Thanks. Awesome, Peter. Great. Thank you so much. All right. So AI 101, if you're just getting started or if you're willing to teach others, join that. Ken, AI in business. All, All right. Hey everyone. Yeah, my name is Ken. I am a professional marketer by trade. I've been in marketing. I'm sure these spots I didn't get, but I did a really like work. Sorry about that. Uh, so just starting over there, I am Ken. I'll be leading the AI for Business Guild. A little bit about me. I'm a professional marketer by trade. I've been in marketing for the last 10 years. Uh, I have a particular interest in AI tools and how they apply to business, which is why I'm leading the AI for Business Guild. Um, so I'll keep this short because I know we're kind of running out of time. I've just got a few points here. Who is the AI, AI for Business Guild for? It's for anybody that wants to utilize AI in the workforce, um, anybody that wants to increase individual workplace efficiency with AI, uh, it's about it's for anybody who wants to learn various AI tools for business and or a job search. Uh, anybody that's wanting to use AI in their job. Uh, also, it's not just for how you can use AI in a job. It's it's for anybody that's interested in how businesses are implementing 
using and adapting AI tools in their business. Just like we talked about earlier today, Amazon purchasing, uh, making a $4 billion investment uh, and any kind of business that's really using and implementing AI tools. We want to keep up to date with that kind of news and really keep up to the keep up to date with the trends in AI uh, in business. Um, also, anybody for who it's for anybody who's interested in how AI is changing the workforce. Um, so, for example, a tool that I really enjoy using is called Deep Talk. It's using AI to um, analyze sentiment uh, for customers or any kind of taking any kind of text chat and assigning sentiment value to it and how businesses use sentiment to kind of move forward, move their business forward with what their customers want. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in business for AI, I would encourage you to join. If you have any other ideas about what you'd like to see covered, uh, I'd love to hear that. Just uh, message me directly or join the guild and put your thoughts in the guild. Awesome, great, thank you, Ken. And I'll, I'll... I'll toot Ken's horn a little bit because uh, he didn't do it himself. So, so in the organizers meeting, whenever we would say, "Hey, you know, we're trying to figure out this or that or the other," Ken would go, "Oh, I've got a lifetime subscription to this tool that does exactly that." Like he knows tools; he's amazing. So, so, uh, so if, if you're into that, trying to figure out how, how you roll this stuff into business, um, join Ken. And then finally, a related yet different uh, kind of guild is entrepreneurship. And Bradley is, is going to be the, uh, the guild master for entrepreneurship. So Bradley, tell them what you got planned here and uh, take it away. And just leave me like seven minutes at the end so I can show people how to join the guilds. All right, we, we should be good. So I'm sharing my screen. Can everyone yep. see it? Yep. OK, so um, me and Ken chatted beforehand just to make sure that we understood kind of some of the nomenclatures of, you know, AI in business and then AI uh, entrepreneurship. And so Ken, Ken's group will be mostly, fo you know, will be focused on AI inside business and individuals work flows. So, you know, workforce, this one's going to really look at business models and startups in the new AI era. So a um, little bit about me, um, I have worked with startups for over 10 years. My background is in customer experience, digital product strategy, and user and market research. So that's kind of the insights or the brain that is, you know, being used for, for this group. Um, but, you know, my, my, my career has always kind of, it's been all over the place. Um, and one thing my entire life has really been around solving problems and a lot of entrepreneurship and business starts from a core frustration that isn't being met right now. Um, Redbox got its start because the guy got pissed off uh, sitting in line at Blockbuster. So he decided that he was going to put them out of business by starting up Redbox. Ultimately, he got put out of business by Netflix. But um, each one is solving a core problem um, and a frustration that's currently not being met. And so that's what we want to focus on with AI um, for entrepreneurship. So the potential structure that we'll, we'll be going with is the biweekly meetings that will uh, be opposite the AI salon. Uh, and we're going to have presentations, guest speakers, and group discussions around really the disrupt disruptions coming through AI um, for business models, business infrastructures, and present some opportunities that are going to be available to us, you know, by using AI to, you know, put the, put everybody on notice that isn't using AI uh, for businesses. So uh, other things that we'll be doing is some activities and events that are going to be startup focused for training. So ideation workshops, uh, market opportunities, how to write business plans using AI, uh, marketing and growth, and then how AI is going to affect teams and resources to get your business idea upstarted. Like the time to launch a business, the team that you need to help you do it is all decreasing and you're going to be able to compete with the larger companies uh, out there and then we'll have some chat threads where it just be a network of flow hello ai and entrepreneurship enth enthusiasts to really kind of support and help everybody grow um 
So some of the topics that this group will talk about is new age business models, uh, the shifts in the market that we're seeing. Uh, we are going to be seeing changing user behaviors. So this is going to be very important as, as we're solving problems for users, we got to understand their changes in behaviors, uh, which I misspelled behaviors, but you know, that's my behavior. So um, we're also going to be looking at teams and resources. <laughs> yeah. Well, I forgot, I forgot the A in behaviors, but oh well, AI should oh, fix yeah. that. Um, yeah. So we'll talk about AI tools, future forecasting. So some of the, again, trends in the marketplace, but also uh, pie in the sky dream states of how can we shoot for that moon? Um, business funding shifts. Uh, we'll look at new startup needs, AI startup resources, and then AI business opportunities. And this might be mixing multiple tools together to solve a problem or workflow. So. Um, and then finally, uh, to get everybody started, once you go over to the guild, I want everybody to post on the guild, what is one frustration that you have or you know people have that you've been dreaming of fixing for a really long time. So maybe it's, I wish I had my own TV channel for all my content. I hate hopping around all these streaming channels. I just want one place to go and it just knows what I wanna watch. Or I hate when I have to find someone to do work on my own. Um, so it could be anything that you have as a frustration, and that is going to be a starting point for a business uh, and for an opportunity to be fixed. Because if other people have the problem and you have the problem, there's going to be somebody out there that's going to fix it. So why not you? So that's my pitch, um, and I'll hand things over to Kyle. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right, thank you all. So take over here. I just want to jump in as a co-host and just say how awesome. That's all I need to say, and then we can go see how to sign up. But I'm so excited about these offerings. Wait, say, that, say it again. You, you went in here. And, uh, oh, yeah. I'm just so excited. I'm really, really excited about these offerings. Like, I know we've been talking about it and putting it out there and seeing it all come together tonight in the salon. I just, I'm going to yeah. try, like Christine just posted, she's going to try them all. I'm going to try them all. It's so, so exciting. Yeah, it, it's, it's really exciting. Okay. Yeah. So here, here we are in, um, in, in the Salon Discord. If, if you're not in the Salon Discord, um, uh, Ken or, or uh, Jane or anybody, can you just uh, put an invite to the, to the Discord in the chat? Um, and you can all see my screen, correct? I can't. Yes. Well, yeah. <laughs> okay, here. Yes. Good. Okay. Um, okay. So when you're in the salon Discord, there's announcements. There's introduce yourself. When you come in, um, definitely join, but do introduce yourself properly. Let us know who you are. Um, then there's some resources, and right below that are guilds, and you'll see the the there's the irregular skills there. Um, there's Leah's Making Art Guild, James Writer's Circle, Peter's AI 101, Brad's Entrepreneurship Guild, and Ken's AI for Business. And then there's this channel called Join the Guild. And so if you click on that, you'll see the guilds here. And it, Discord's a little wonky, but how you join a guild is you, you sort of find the little icon to the left of the guild you want, and then you actually click on one of the guilds, one of, one of those icons at the bottom, right? So I've clicked on all of these so I can turn off, for example, the, the light bulb, which is Bradley's entrepreneur. So now I'm not part of that guild. You do not have to click on one of these things to go into the Discord channels and chat, but by clicking one of these icons, it actually assigns you a role in Discord. That's not important right now in terms of getting into the channel, but it's important for the, for the guild leaders to be able to know who you are. So if they want to find out, hey, who's in my guild? You having that role allows them to do that. Also, if you know how Discord works, um, there may be things that guild masters want to do at some point where they might want to make, maybe in the entrepreneurship, Bradley wants to make something private. If you're talking about ideas that you don't want other people to, to see publicly, there might be a private thing and you can only get in that if you've got, if you've got that role. So uh, basically, see the guild you're interested in, click on the icon below, that will give you the role, and then I would encourage you, I think that's a great idea, just just go try all of them, jump in there. Um, this is a grand experiment, and you know, we, we talked before the meeting tonight, everyone was like, well, I'm not sure like, what I'm going to do in my guild, I'm like, that's okay, like, that's good, just figure it out. So. Um, 
if you join a guild, your participation will drive the future of that every bit as much as the guild leader, right? The guild leader is just there as kind of the structure and the vision, uh, but participation is everything. Um, so with that, I know there were some hand raised earlier. Um, let me stop presenting. I'm happy to answer any questions about Discord, um, but if, does anyone have any questions or thoughts now that we've gone through the guilds and launched them and we're ready to go? I just want to remind everyone that a link to the Discord is in the chat, and you should click it, and it will take you right through what you need to do to get up and running with Discord. Perfect. RJ. RJ? Hi. I, I was just going to suggest, well, first of all, the, the guilds sound really, really great. But I was going to suggest that you try to keep things as simple and uh, as low efficient and like uh, essential as possible because otherwise it's, it's going to become too much work for people so if you try to minimize it so it's like almost like really easy 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 to do that would really i think help your longevity and i just wanted to make a side note as i punched i, I posted a bunch of links in the chat uh one is for mid-journey fans there's a really good meetup i found that uh, two people Two women do a really good job twice a week. Uh, so if you look for the, the mid journey link that I put in there, and I also put a really, really good link for anybody who's doing job searching. I attended a meetup uh, a while ago, but they recorded it. So, and they also have a free booklet. So if you're doing job searching and you want to help get help from ChatGTP on it, they explain exactly how to do it and especially in their workbook. So that's a really great opportunity to learn how to use ChatGTP at the same time. So I just wanted to give a shout out for both of those. All right, great. Thank you, RJ. Any other thoughts, questions for the guild leaders? Ideas? All right, fantastic. Well, Leah? A, a, new, so, a, new, I, a new era has begun. We are, we are multimodal. I've always wanted to be a guild master. I really have. <laughs> I didn't See? even know I wanted to be, and now I am. I'm a guild master. <laughs> uh, that's great. You've blown our minds. No worries. <laughs> great. Awesome. Welcome. So so thanks, everybody, for hanging out. Um, folks here in Denver, we'll head over to Zeppelin if you want to hang out a little bit. And then uh, folks online, uh, we'll see you in two weeks. In two weeks, um, ChatGPT should not resemble what it is today. So, so I assume we'll have some things to talk about. But join the guilds. Um, you know, share any ideas you have there, and uh, and we'll see how things go. And we'll see All you right. Next Thank time. you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. See you next time. Bye bye. See you on Discord. Bye, everyone. <laughs>